Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, welcome to my channel if you're new around here. So if you are new, please make sure you do subscribe, but for today's video I have a very very highly requested video that I've literally been meaning to film for the longest time and it's basically a video all about the uni that I go to. Hold on, I'm gonna take my glasses off because I feel like that's better. I feel like although I now have anti-glare glasses, they're still not quite anti-glare so I do apologise. So like I said, today's video is gonna basically be bit of a Q&A all about Bournemouth Uni and kind of my experience I guess. I do want to do another video later on where I talk about kind of my whole experience from start to finish because I am now in my final year so that's kind of a little bit scary. If you are new around here I, like I said, go to Bournemouth Uni and I study communication and media um, which again I will talk a little bit more about in this video but again I might also still do a separate video all about my course so if that is something that you are interested in then do let me know um but for today I thought I would literally just sit down and answer some questions you guys have I've kind of categorized them so I will leave timestamps um down below or wherever somewhere on this page in case there's only like one specific thing that you guys are interested in um but other than that without further ado Let's get into it, shall we? So the first kind of generalised topic I want to talk about is kind of getting started with uni and um, accommodation. A lot of people were asking me like how I knew that Bournemouth was the right uni for me. Um, and this kind of goes to anyone when whether you're picking like any different uni to go to. Um, you need to like make sure that the vibe is right for you and it's what suits you essentially. For me, I knew Bournemouth was right for me because I love the location, I love the beach, I love the town. Um, but I also love the campus and I love the buildings. Obviously, this year, I haven't really seen much of it, but for the most part, I absolutely love how kind of modern the buildings are. When I was first looking at universities, I wasn't particularly bothered about um, them being old fashioned and like really stunning, like regal buildings, like I know that some unis are. For me, I loved that they were really modern and really new, especially the Fusion building at the time was brand new, so like, it was stunning inside. It still is one of my favorite buildings to sit and work um so for me it was kind of the atmosphere above all else whether or not i could see myself actually living in the town which i definitely could as much as kind of the teaching side of it and the course also had to be completely right for me i feel like because of the course that i do it's very broad so i feel like it didn't really matter too much about the course because a lot of the a lot of other unis i looked at do a very very similar course so it wasn't like it offered one specific thing. I really like the idea that my uni offers kind of placements. They do it really easily through my uni. They also offer study abroad, which I didn't end up doing, but I liked the idea of that. And yeah, I just liked some of the stuff that Bournemouth offered above any other uni that I looked at. But I think mostly for me, it was just the buildings and the vibe of the place. I liked that it didn't seem too strict and too academic because obviously my course isn't crazy academic. I'm not a really academic person, so I liked that it was a little bit different in that respect. The next question I got a lot was your best tip for a first year student. Now I guess this isn't necessarily Bournemouth specific, but the one thing I always try and tell people that I know are going into first year is remember that your first year doesn't actually count. Like your first year at uni is just a free for all. It's a good opportunity to kind of get used to the work, get used to how things are done, um, getting used to living by yourself, living with flatmates, like it's a whole experience first year and i truly feel like first year is kind of a completely different experience to your rest to the rest of your uni time because obviously like i said first year doesn't count at all so it really doesn't matter in terms of the work that you produce with that being said you do obviously need to make sure that you are doing kind of the best work you possibly can it's a really good chance to practice your academic work especially if you're doing an academic subject it's super important that you use first year as a practice run um like i said it doesn't count so if you don't do well then that's completely okay but it is the best possible chance for you to kind of get used to your course make sure you definitely like it and yeah i just say it's treat it as a practice run if you don't do well in first year it isn't the be all and end all use this time to kind of take on as many new experiences as you possibly can that you maybe hadn't considered or weren't otherwise thinking about doing just throw yourself in completely with first year. Um, it's a very weird and exciting time, but that's all I can really say is just kind of make the most of it that you possibly can. I'm not even talking like go on all the nights out because I know that that's not everyone's thing. If it is your thing, great, then go and do that. But if it's not, then it doesn't really matter. But definitely just try as many different things as you can that you've always wanted to do. If there's a society you wanna get involved with, or even if it's just literally perfecting your 
techniques when it comes to essay writing, this is your chance to do that. It's your chance to kind of figure out who you are as a person, as cliche as that sounds. So this next question is one that I got and I kind of was a little bit like, I didn't realise this was a thing that people considered, but I guess actually it is. How important is it to have your own laptop slash printer? Um, so for me, obviously, I've always had a laptop, like it was never something that I considered getting for uni specifically, I guess maybe if you're someone who's used to using like a computer at home or maybe you just don't really use that, maybe you just use like your school library, that kind of thing, I would definitely say get a laptop, even if it's just a super cheap one. Um, if you know that you're a library person and you work better in a the library then, you know, like it's not going to be the massive end of the world if you don't have your own laptop but especially at the moment because everything is online I would say it is more important to have your own laptop um, a lot of unis have closed their campuses so for the most part you can't you know get access to a computer at Bournemouth the library and a building called open access which is like a big computer suite is open so if you don't have your own laptop and you're already here then that's kind of okay that you can just go and use one of those but obviously especially for right now whilst we're still kind of in lockdowns and going through the whole pandemic I would definitely say that you should have your own laptop if you can um if not speak to a uni about it might be able to offer you one and you can kind of borrow for a while in terms of printers though I would say you don't need your own I had my own in first year that I bought specifically for uni I didn't have it pre-uni obviously my parents have one at home which I just normally use but I bought myself one I think I used it once honestly I used it once everything is just online these days you really don't need to print anything off for me I found that in first year it was really helpful to print off my reading list so I could tick them off as I went um that's something that you might want to do but if you do want to print stuff you can just use the library like it does cost a little bit of money but at the end of the day you're going to be buying ink you're going to be buying a printer it's probably not going to be any more expensive than having your own printer um if you're if you know you're likely to print off every single thing that you do if you're someone who likes to keep physical copies of everything then maybe but in my own experience i got a printer and didn't need it i don't have it with me now in this house i had it in first year used it once and took it home and that was it i've never used it since so i would say don't worry about having your own printer unless you already have your own um the library has sufficient printing facilities every uni will have a good way of printing stuff and for the most part you probably find that you don't even need to print anything anyway so the next question is how and when did you go about finding accommodation so if you're talking in first year for bournemouth basically on a level results day i don't know if it's different at the moment because of obviously the pandemic but for me when i started which was in 2017 which makes me feel very old for me it was a case of on a level results day um i obviously confirmed that i wanted to come to bournemouth and they sent me a link to the registration portal where i could choose my accommodation um i actually messed up my accommodation i booked the wrong one but with that being said they were super super helpful i got on the phone with them and they managed to change it for me like pretty much straight away so i would say don't stress too much about accommodation because there's always someone you can speak to if you book the wrong one if you don't feel like the one you've booked is where you want to be like there's always options and especially with bournemouth now they have so many options when it comes to halls and accommodation when i started there were only like a few options for halls like the few main ones but since i've been here they've opened like four more buildings um and there's probably going to be more on the way i don't know i will say that the accommodation in bournemouth is expensive like if you are looking to come here the halls are not cheap i lived in lime regis house which at the time was the cheapest one and even that cover my, my entire loan didn't even cover it i had to use my overdraft so do look into pricing when it comes to accommodation i know a lot of the newer accommodation has like like a gym and free parking and all of that so if you're someone who you know that you're going to use a gym a lot then maybe look into one of the more expensive options that has a gym um but yeah there's so many different accommodation types in bournemouth now which is obviously really good obviously if you don't want to live in halls you can also live in student housing that is something that everyone does in second and third year anyway um that again is also super easy to find there are facebook pages of people like advertising their rooms all the time there's tons of estate agents if you want me to do a whole separate video about housing and like university accommodation and i can kind of spill the tea on estate agents to avoid and that sort of thing then do let me know because i could go on about it forever otherwise in this video but yeah when it comes to halls there are so many different options and i'm just gonna leave it at that and the final one i'm gonna answer on this kind of topic is what are halls actually like in first year I was a little bit scared about moving into halls just because I didn't like the idea of living with people that I don't know. Bournemouth do this system where you basically 
pick your where well, you pick your flat based on people that are already living there so you can kind of click on a flat number when you book your accommodation and it'll tell you the name of the person who's already living there who's already selected it and you get to write a little bio about yourself so kind of what you're into are you a quiet person are you a night owl do you like nights out do you like staying in all that sort of stuff so you can kind of pick your flat based on the people that have already picked it as well and like the sort of vibe that they are um i did that and i kind of went for a middle ground of like people that don't want to just stay in all the time but people that don't want to just go out all the time because i'm definitely that middle ground like i do enjoy a night out but i don't you know i wouldn't go out of my way to go on a night out like i i'm more than happy to stay in as well so for me that balance really really worked um i didn't find that there was one of us in the flat that went out any more than like the rest of us to a point where it was like annoying you know um some of my flatmates were a little bit loud a little bit messy in first year that is definitely just to be expected at the end of the at the end of the day most of you have never lived away from home before and this is your first experience of doing that so of course you're going to be a little bit messy of course you're probably going to be a little bit loud too late at night like it's going to happen it's to be expected i think in first year i took it a little bit too personally and would like get annoyed really easily when the kitchen was a mess or when someone was being loud but at the end of the day like that's just how life goes and i feel like you don't have a proper horse experience if you don't experience at least one of your flatmates being messy or loud like that's just gonna happen um obviously you can talk to them about that it's not kind of the end of the world if that is the case um some people have a great horse experience and they literally get on with their flat so well um i know that one of my friends who has literally just started last year is absolutely loving living with her flatmates at the moment so um, that makes me really happy um but not everyone has a great experience you are likely to meet people on your course whether you're doing it in person or online so your flatmates aren't the only people that you can hang around with personally for me in first year i barely spent any time with my flatmates not because we didn't get along but just because we were very different people in the end and we made our own kind of friendship groups and obviously when i started uni life was very normal so for me i could go out and meet people on my course or on lives out like it's super easy to make friends especially in the first couple of weeks at uni so um i wouldn't worry too much about your halls experience it is what it is it's going to be a bit messy it's going to be a bit, bit loud your flat will have problems like our kitchen window didn't close for basically the whole year that's just gonna happen and i feel like if you go in with low expectations your expectations are likely to be exceeded. So next up, we're gonna move on and talk a little bit about my course. As I said, I am doing communication and media. It is just a very broad, general media course. You do a little bit of everything, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. The first question was, what is your course like? So like I said, it's very broad. You literally get to do a whole mixture of different things. We've done marketing, we're about to do PR, um, but we've also written short stories, we've written magazine articles, we've learned theory behind kind of media and society, like we've done so much and you can do journalism, like there are literally so many options you can pick when it comes to my course, which is the reason that I picked it because I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life pre like uni or really post uni, I still don't really know. So having a very broad course has been really nice because it has meant that I can kind of pick and choose what I want to learn about and I can find different things that I might be interested in. I do, now that I'm in final year, wish that things were a little bit more narrowed down just because I still feel like I don't really have an idea what I want to go into just because I have enjoyed so much, like, so many aspects of the course. Like there are so many things that I could go into now, but I guess it's only a good thing because it means I'm leaving my options open. My course is very laid back as well in terms of academic work. I feel like I haven't had anywhere near as much work as a lot of my friends doing more academic degrees. That's not to say it's not been challenging though. There have definitely been projects that have like literally consumed my life. I'm currently in the middle of doing one right now, which the deadline for this as you're watching this video was yesterday. And I know that I'm gonna be so like glad to have it out of my life because it's been a lot of work. Stay tuned for my weekly vlog coming on Sunday because I'll talk more about that project, but definitely for me some stuff has been challenging some stuff has been super fun and interesting 
but I guess that again that's the same with every course like you're gonna have stuff you're really interested in and you're gonna have stuff that you're not so interested in but for me I would say it's been quite laid back workload wise but it's also been challenging it's also been fun but it's very broad and I'm very grateful for that someone has asked what has been my favorite unit over the three years so I had to think about this I really enjoyed the short story unit that I had last term I've also really enjoyed the unit that I literally just mentioned that I'm literally just about to finish as much as it has been a huge project I would loved it it's probably one of my favorite assignments I've ever done it's an assignment that I'm really really proud of so I would say the community and digital engagement unit if you are looking at my course has been one that I've it surprised me the most I didn't think I'd enjoy it as much as I have um but I have really really enjoyed it and um, I'm trying to think what else I've really enjoyed um the marketing units have been very interesting I didn't get amazing grades in it but I did enjoy it I did find it super interesting um and just anything that allows me to be a bit creative and kind of do my own thing and like my own project I really loved I do not do not like group work like, I really hate group work I've made that very clear on this channel a lot of times I hate it so much I would much rather just get on with it myself I've quite enjoyed doing like a partner project this time around with my project but I'm working with a friend so it's a lot easier but with that being said I would definitely take a solo project over a group project any day that is definitely something to bear in mind if you are looking at Bournemouth there seems to be a lot of group work so if you're not one for group work then maybe reconsider that but if you are then we're here the next question was how taxing is your course and do i get any time off so like i said i don't think my course is overly taxing to be honest that wasn't me picking a course to be lazy that was just me picking a course something that i'm genuinely interested in um i know that there are other courses that are obviously going to be a lot more taxing than mine with that being said i do just want to stress like don't just pick a uni course because it's going to be easy no course no degree is ever going to be easy there's always going to be something that challenges you that is the point of a degree but with that being said i do feel incredibly lucky that my workload has never been really crazily overwhelming there have been points where it's been stressful definitely but it's never been like breakdown level of like overwhelming you know um which i am very grateful for it's meant that i've enjoyed my degree a lot more than i know i would have had it have been incredibly overwhelming um in terms of time off we do get time off we get a reading week which is like every october you get a week in october that's like a week off essentially to catch up with your work to do your reading a lot of people including myself like to get their work done prior to reading week and then have reading week as a week off um just because i feel like i need it at that point just to kind of re-energize and kind of get myself together a little bit obviously you also get christmas off you get three weeks off at christmas you get three weeks off at easter and obviously you get the summer holidays as well generally generally the course finishes about may end of may start of june and then you'll go back at the end of september so you do get quite a long break you're generally not at uni for that long like if you're worried about not getting enough time off honestly i do feel like you have a lot more freedom than you would say at school or at a level obviously as well because of your timetable you're generally not in uni a whole lot of time so it's up to you to kind of structure your weeks if you fancy having a day off in the middle of the week do it like uni is yours to structure your time you choose when you're going to work and actually that's something that i've really really loved doing the last three years is having time as my own to plan and it's meant i have actually been more productive because i've spent more time doing work when i'm more productive but then also taking time off as well and it's been it's been a real treat honestly the next thing i'm going to talk to you guys about and i'm really sorry if you can hear talking my housemates are in the kitchen and the kitchen is directly below my room and it's all i can hear um but the next thing i'm going to talk about is finding a placement placements are a huge part of Bournemouth Uni that is what we're known for is getting really good industry placements and it's one of the reasons I picked Bournemouth because I knew it had so many good connections um so if you are looking to get like a really good industry practice then definitely Bournemouth obviously right now because of the pandemic things are a little bit different and placements aren't really happening as they usually do but with that being said the experience I had was super positive and especially like in terms of choosing my placement so Bournemouth has like a careers portal I guess on their website um, that students and grads can access and it basically means that you have an infinite list of placements and internships and jobs that are hiring students this was how I found my placement I didn't use any external website I know you can, you can use like the dots I don't even know there's so many different 
um, placement websites like that aren't linked to a university but for us I got mine off my uni website it was just super easy um, it made life a lot easier we did have careers talks I'm gonna say I didn't have the most positive experience when it came to my placement and careers talk my placement advisor was a bit negative in terms of me wanting to go to London she was trying to make me stay in Bournemouth saying it would have been easier which I understand like she was being realistic but at the same time I really had my heart set on wanting to be in London and so for me I knew that I just that was something that I was gonna do whether she said it was a good idea or not so I didn't have a super positive experience in that respect but I know that other people did have a really positive experience so I guess it was probably just kind of my own personal experience um but finding a placement was super easy Bournemouth make it easy they have lectures about it and they do talks and they have um like previous alumni coming in to tell you like how easy it is and their tips for basically getting a successful placement um so that was kind of how i found my placement every placement that is added onto bournemouth's like careers portal will be a paid placement it has to be like sometimes the pay isn't amazing but it is still a paid placement they have them all over the world essentially in obviously non-covid times but for us at bournemouth we found our placements during second year of uni so we took our year out in between second and third year you don't have to take a year out you can just do a four week placement which you do kind of over the summer holidays um some people did both just because it was easier for, that's what they wanted to do um i know at the moment because of lockdowns and stuff they are changing that policy to make it so that you don't really have to do it if you don't want to if you don't feel comfortable to if you're unable to that kind of thing so yeah before it was like a requirement of being a student at Bournemouth that you had to do a placement of some sort um but I know that as of right now that's not possible for everyone so they're not kind of pushing it as much as they usually would but yeah as soon as you hit second year placement stuff will start kind of getting fed into you slowly and you'll have a few talks here and there about that which are really interesting so I would definitely recommend getting in as involved as you can they also have the global talent program which I'm gonna be honest I'm not the most educated on because I didn't do it um, and I don't plan on doing it but it's basically where you can kind of pick up different skills and have it as like a certificate for your CV which again is similar to like a placement kind of thing um but it's just like a little added thing which they do which I think is really good so again if you're looking to boost your CV whilst you're here that's another really great thing to check out. So the next topic I'm going to talk about is something that I had like over 30 questions about and it was all asking how Bournemouth has handled the pandemic. In a short answer, not great. Um, but to be honest with you guys, I don't think any uni has really handled the pandemic great, have they? Like, I don't think I've seen one positive experience from any uni so to be honest i'm really not surprised that bournemouth is no different we are a relatively small uni so it was never going to be great i don't know i think bournemouth focuses a lot of its efforts and time on having students on campus using the facilities that are available here a lot of our courses are practical so i think that means that we have kind of been more heavily hit with online learning online learning wise hasn't it's been a mess to be honest our timetables never add up to what is actually going on i've had two lectures since i've been back back in september and they were both pre-recorded lectures and they gave us three of them and then decided not to post any more of them which i don't understand why they did but it was super infuriating because it was a unit that i was quite keen to learn a lot about and obviously we couldn't i'm also not a fan about the fact that we have to still hand our work in on time but they can spend over a month marking it and getting it back to us and blaming the pandemic like that's just not right like yeah they haven't offered us no detriment this year which a lot of people are in uproar about me personally i think that they should have done something i understand they can't do no detriment because there's nothing to base it off of um from previous years but with that being said they should definitely still be marking our work more leniently because obviously we don't have the resources of being able to freely go into uni and using the library without having to book a slot and only being allowed in there for like an hour i do think they just haven't handled it well but at the same time i don't think any uni really has have they i do want to go more into, more in depth about this um i might have a little secret project coming soon um where i will be talking more about how unis have handled the pandemic and kind of navigating uni during a pandemic so do stay tuned for that make sure you're subscribed because that'll be coming in the coming like next couple of months um and i am really passionate about talking more about this so yeah that is coming but not great is the answer but with that being said don't let it put you off 
choosing Bournemouth as a uni option. Um, like I said, every uni is having these problems, so it's not just like an exclusive thing to us. Everywhere up and down the country is having this problem, so. And of course, who knows where we're gonna be by next September, so you still have a while to kind of consider these things. The next question was, motivation-wise, is online uni harder? Yes, oh my god. So I always say the positives with online uni is that you can literally roll out of bed not have to walk to uni in the rain and you can stay in your pajamas like i do think that's a great bonus of online uni it's one really good thing that has come out of this year but with that being said i do not have the motivation for online uni i don't learn as well i don't take as much information in if i'm just watching it on a zoom um, my internet in my house is appalling so i'm cut out of the zoom most of the time i can't ever really get involved because I'm just like being cut out constantly. Online uni is really not ideal and I don't wish it upon any more year groups. Fingers crossed we can return to normal this September. Unfortunately, I won't be here for that. I'll be finished by then. But with that being said, like it does have its positives and its negatives. I just think the negatives currently are outweighing the positives. Um, I'm not sure if that's what you wanted to hear, but my honest experience is that it's really hard to learn online. Um, it's really hard to stay focused when you're sat in your room there's so many distractions like when you're sat in a lecture like you're watching the lecturer actually teaching um you can't really be distracted whereas when you're at home it's so easy just to mute yourself turn your camera off and go and do something else like it's so so much more difficult so next up we're going to talk about some more kind of final year stuff the first one is a very nice question how is your dissertation going um i can't answer that because i haven't started it that sounds really bad, I know, because it is like mid-January right now. Um, hopefully by the time this video goes up, I will have done a little bit of work towards it. I've done the proposal and I've obviously had that checked and I'm like, got the go-ahead to start on my topic. Um, my plan for this week is to do a little bit of an introduction, do some more reading. Honestly, it's a slow process, but I'm hoping to have it finished by the end of the lockdown because that would be great, a great way to spend lockdown, I think. But yeah, at the moment, not feeling too motivated with it. So if anyone has any tips for me, about doing my dissertation let me know next one is how are you finding your final year in a pandemic obviously this is the first year i've been at uni during the covid times because the first like half of 2020 i was on my placement still so i was working from home um like on my placement and then i didn't have my placement anymore so i wasn't doing anything i'm not enjoying it it feels weird it feels like i'm not actually at uni like it's a completely different experience to what it was two years ago obviously because of the times we're in currently um it's very weird not being able to sit in a lecture and see anyone from my course um it was a little bit normal in like september october when we could actually go and sit in uni and i honestly relished that i really really like took advantage of being able to go into uni and sitting in the library and different buildings and stuff like that felt pretty normal um i also live kind of away from the central hub of students this year which was completely unintentional and that was something that was going to happen pandemic or not um that also makes it feel a little bit weird. Also haven't been on a night out since we've been back. Um, we've been on like, a couple of like bottomless brunches or like trips to the pub, but we haven't been out out. And like, for me, as much as I'm not a huge night out person, it is such a huge part of being at uni that just makes it feel so much more different. I've also been to Florida and lived in London for a year since I've been here. So I do feel like I've grown a lot as a person as well which might contribute to the fact that I don't feel like I'm at uni right now, but um, yeah, it's weird. I'm not loving it as much as I wanted to love final year. Um, I'm really hoping we can graduate because I'll be so gutted if we can't. Um, as long as I can go and take my photo with my dissertation outside of a uni building, I think then I'm, I'll be satisfied. Um, but to be honest, I do, I do understand there's nothing we can do about it. So I am just kind of going going with it another little like fun question i guess is what was my favorite term or year at uni first year was definitely my favorite year at uni for sure it had its complications and it's like ups and downs obviously um but i loved living in halls halls was my favorite place i've ever lived um in terms of like whilst i've been at uni purely because i love the freedom of it being the first place that i'd moved out to i loved having a bathroom like my own bathroom that was great 
um i just yeah there's something about first year when you're just so naive and so like i keep saying it doesn't count so you can just have fun and enjoy it and get used to it and there's something very nice about a new experience for the first time so definitely first year for sure so the final category i'm going to talk to you guys about is kind of general life in bournemouth um and the first one is best places to go during lockdown so walks for example um obviously the beach is an obvious answer but with that being said at the moment bournemouth beaches are so busy especially at weekends so i would obviously if you're a student you probably have more free time i would advise going for walks during the week if you can and avoiding um like town and the beaches on weekends um the further out you go away from like bournemouth beach the quieter it is so, like alan chine sandbanks um hengsbury head all those places are like amazing to go for walks um they're super calming and just just lovely we went on a walk yesterday and it was the nicest thing so i feel like the beach is an obvious answer other places if you're in winton if you're a student obviously you'll know what i mean there's a place called slade's farm which is basically just a massive park that's a really nice place to go for a walk there's also um the stour the river stour is that what it's called which is like basically runs around the back of bournemouth um so if you can get there then that's a really nice walk as well when it's not flooded it's been quite flooded recently but again that's a really lovely walk to do during lockdowns it never gets too busy and on top of that the best things to do in bournemouth um again i might do a whole video on this at some point if the kind of pandemic starts allowing people to go out again um my favorite place to go for a drink or to go to do like a pub quiz is 60 million postcards i talked about this a lot um i'm really really hoping it makes it out of the pandemic okay because i'd be gutted if it didn't but postcards is one of my favorite places in bournemouth is where i feel most comfortable for like a night out environment um so if you're not like a super massive night out fan but you like to go out for a drink then postcards is amazing aruba is also really nice in terms of like a night out literally on the seafront so it's really lovely um there's a lot of crazy golf in bournemouth so if you're into crazy golf then you're gonna have a great time there's so many crazy golf places okay my camera battery's flashing so i'm gonna move on to the last question but it is has life in bournemouth been what you expected i think it has i went into my uni experience with very little expectations because i hadn't planned on going to uni basically until the day that i press confirm on my offer um i was very unsure i thought i was going to defer or just not go um but generally speaking it has been better than i expected just because i didn't really expect anything that is my advice going into uni if you're starting uni in september then go in with very low expectations don't expect too much from it and i promise you'll be you'll be surprised and you'll grow so much as a person which i think is the one thing that i didn't expect um i am literally like a completely different person to my first day at uni like if you go back and watch my videos then i'm not that person anymore so yeah i do think that's been really lovely and yeah I, it's been surprising for sure all right everyone i think we're gonna end this video here thank you so much for watching if you're starting uni this year then good luck honestly i'm here my dms are always open if you have any questions or worries especially if you're starting at bournemouth i'd love to give you some more advice if i can if you do have any more questions then please let me know in the comments down below if not make sure you are subscribed and i'll see you all again very soon with another video bye Hello.